The other day, my friend Michelle shared her delicious Sri Lankan curry recipe. It is absolutely divine. So we need to start with some potatoes and I've got some all-purpose potatoes here. These ones are fantastic because they're gonna hold their shape as they cook. So I've just peeled them, I've placed them in some water and we're going to cut them into four pieces. So four even pieces. And the best thing about Michelle's curry is you don't have to fry the onions off, you don't have to temper the spices, it all goes in one pot and it cooks together nicely. It's just so aromatic and it's just super easy to put together. So once the potatoes have been chopped up, we'll place them in a saute pan. Okay, and I haven't turned the heat on yet. We'll need half an onion and I'm just going to slice that nice and thin and we'll just break that up just so it separates and sprinkle that over our potatoes. Some curry leaves. I'll need one stalk and we'll just take the leaves off. You just take them off like that and sprinkle them over the onions. And a pandan leaf. Now you can get these from Indian grocers and you can find them at Asian grocers too. It's quite unique and Michelle says it's crucial for her potato curry. So I've just tied that up like so and that can go on top. Two chilies and these are two small green chilies. I'm just going to finely slice them. And the chilli amount really depends on how hot you want it. I think Michelle probably would put another two in, but I'm going to keep mine a little milder. And then, again, we'll sprinkle that in. OK, a few spices, some whole spices first. One cinnamon stick, one clove and two cardamom pods. And with the pods, before you add them, I like to just place them on my board and just bruise them slightly just to release as much flavour out of them as possible. So knife on and just press that and it just releases more flavour. And some fenugreek. Now fenugreek has a sweet nutty flavour. These are fenugreek seeds. Sprinkle them in. And some turmeric and this is going to give it a beautiful colour. Okay, so for some liquid, one can of coconut milk. We'll pour that in and this will be too thick so we need to add some water and I just like to clean my can out just so we get as much of that coconut flavour in there as possible and then pour that in. I'll just give that a mix and ideally you want enough liquid to just coat the potato. So I might add just the smallest amount more of water and we can check as it cooks. We also need some salt. So a good pinch of salt. There's quite a lot of potatoes in there. And that's it. So simple. Lid goes on and we're going to bring this up to the boil and then I'll turn the heat down, just simmer it for about 15 minutes or until the potatoes are cooked through. Now, while that's cooking, I'm also going to share Michelle's sambal recipe. This is a coconut sambal. Now, ideally you want to do this with fresh coconut, but if you can't get your hands on fresh coconut, you can use just desiccated coconut. But we need to add some moisture to this. So I'll add some coconut milk just a smallest amount along with some water and some lime. It's going to give it a really nice zing. So I'll just grab my knife and we'll cut that in half. I'm going to use my fancy little juicer here to get as much juice out as possible. And I'll start with half a lime and I want to mix this and I want to see the consistency of it. Ideally, we're looking for the consistency of wet sand. So just press that together. And if it's a little dry, then we'll add a little more of the coconut milk. And I'll add some more lime. And I can see it's looking pretty good, but I feel it could do with just another splash of water. A few more ingredients. This sambal has a kick to it. So we've got some more chilli. This is some dry chilli flakes. I'll sprinkle them in along with some Kashmiri chilli powder. That's going to have that bright red colour and some more chilli. Yes, it is a sambal. So another one of those small little rocket green chilies. finely chopping that. And then we'll add that too. The final thing is some raw onion and that was the other half of the onion that I've just finely sliced and then chopped. 
and you want to be quite fine just so it doesn't overtake the other flavours of the coconut and the chilli. We'll just give that a little mix and that sambal is ready to go. In actual fact, it's good to make this ahead of time just so all of those flavours can mingle. Okay, I've just checked the potatoes and they are cooked through. Look at that rich golden gravy that's formed from all of that lovely coconut milk that we've added. But we're going to add just a small amount more just to freshen it up, just a few tablespoons. And we'll just give that a quick stir through. And the best thing about this is there is so much gravy in here. You've got the potatoes, they've absorbed all that lovely flavour. So with all this extra gravy, you do need lots of rice on the side to mop it all up. So let's take some of these potatoes, pop them in a bowl. Just looks so striking against that black plate. And we'll top it up. And I think we sometimes associate potatoes as a side dish, but this is a perfect example of how you can show off your potatoes as a main course with this gorgeous coconut curry. And to finish it off, that coconut sambal, you don't put it on top of the curry, we put it on the side. There are so many different Sri Lankan sambals, but this one is just absolutely divine with the potatoes. And we'll decorate the top of the sambal with a few extra curry leaves because we've got them. And that is the most authentic way to make a Sri Lankan potato curry. Mm -hmm.